Welcome back, nerds. Afino here with a guide for Summer Kiara, the newest moon cancer. She's an arts AoE servant, and I don't know about you, but I'm salivating already. But wait a second. Almost seems too good to be true, doesn't it? So do we have the next great looper, or another Jinako? Let's find out. By the way, I'm recording this before Kiara's official skill names are announced, so you may see those are a little different. The core of Kiara's kit is Mermaid's Meat. Up front, it gives her a long-lasting Guts, cleanses her debuffs, heal per turn, and three turns of NP damage. You pop this whenever it's off cooldown, and the reason is that on top of all this, she gets a stacking special buff every turn for four turns. Her other two skills change based on how many stacks you have. The first is Divine Power, Ink. At zero stacks and level 10, it's a 30% battery plus star dump. With one stack, the battery goes up to 40% and you get more stars, but it eats the stack. With two stacks, the battery goes up again to 50% and the stardom caps out at 30. However, it eats those two stacks. In most situations, you should only use this in its zero stack form, unless you need however much charge to keep your loop going. And the reason for this is that in terms of increasing Kiara's damage, she gets a lot more mileage from her final skill, Clam Palace. At zero stacks, it's a party white one hit evade, removes all enemies' sure hit buffs, cuts their defense, gives an arts resistance debuff, and also inflicts a special crit chance reduction called Bewitchment, which counts as a mental debuff. Remember that part, it's important. With 1 and 2 stacks, the magnitudes of the regular debuffs go up, and you get more applications of Bewitchment. Though, as with Divine Power, you lose more stacks. In farming scenarios, you'll only get 2 stacks in a 3 turn clear, so it's important to know which effect you want empowered and which you'll use at 0 stacks. My strategy is to only use higher levels of Divine Power if Kara needs more than 30% charge to use her NP again. Otherwise, it's Clam Palace. And unless enemy health values or looping considerations require me to use Clam Palace on Wave 2, I exclusively save it for Wave 3. But as to what exactly you're looping with, that brings us to Summer Kiara's noble phantasm, Heaven's Foam. It's an AoE arts attack that gains extra damage based on the number of mental debuffs your target has, capping at 10. What are mental debuffs? Well, by and large, they're related to charm, sleep, and the delayed stun slash skill seal effects, as opposed to the regular stun and regular skill seal. I wouldn't really consider any of these convenient to run with Kiara, though if you have access to Taunt CEs, you can run sacrificial debuffers like Caster's Jeweled Array, Dump His Terror, and Let Him Die. Really, the main source of mental debuffs for Kiara is her own Bewitchment effect, which is why you should prioritize Clam Palace for enhanced effects when you can get away with it. You really want her debuffs to hit, and this creates problems in challenging content since enemies with high debuff resistance or mechanic-based immunity absolutely tank her damage. It's also worth noting Kiara has instant kill tied to overcharge. Normally, that'd be a death sentence for any prospective looper, but hers is special in that it triggers after damage calculation. So even if you get an instant kill proc, she still gets charged back. Now, three hits is low for an arts looper. This puts her in a similar boat to Space Ishtar, where you might need to get fancy in order to balance the damage you need against how much refund you get from a given node. There are some tricks you can use. The first thing I check is your Mystic Code. You can go with Tropical Summer for 10% charge on demand and a synergistic set of buffs, Mage's Association for 20%, or Plug Suit if your needs are greater or messier. That said, I'd try and avoid Plug Suit unless you're out of options. Running a 5-star attacker with Castoria is already going to run up your team cost. Adding more supports on top of that will negatively affect your ability to stack event CEs. The second place I'd look to is your append skills. There are two relevant to farming. First is, of course, load magical energy, which combined with Kiara's no-stack battery, is 50% charge right away. This lets you stagger your Castoria skills as needed, and as long as your damage is on point, you can even do something extreme like Tropical Summer and Double Protection of the Lake for the other 50% on turn 1. The other relevant append is anti-caster damage. If you're going to be using Kiara as a generalist farmer, you're definitely going to run into some casters, so you may as well extend her kill range while you're at it. But wait a second. Kill range? Since when is that a problem? Well, the thing about moon cancers is that raw, reliable damage isn't their strong suit. They have class advantage against Avengers and outside of maybe boss fights, you're not going to find those running around in threes. Without class advantage, you have to lean more on raw stats, buffs, and NP level. We already talked about buffs, but Kiara's base attack is a point of interest. It's 11.1k, passable for a 5-star, but this unfortunately makes her the weakest of the big three extra-class arts loopers. Space Ishtar coming in with 12.6k, and next year's Summer Kama with a whopping 13.2k, the second highest raw attack stat in the game after Jolter. The two Avengers also have their self-restoration passives, which give them flat charge at the end of each turn to smooth out their loops. Now that isn't to say Kiara doesn't have her own strong passives. You have Territory Creation for Arts, a Foreign World for NP damage, and Logos Eater for defense against humanoid enemies. It's a neat selection. Unfortunately, she loses her alter ego version's most unique passive, Nega Saver, 
meaning she can't negate her own class disadvantage against rulers. But returning to the damage question, to give Kara an edge, you may have to lean on Black Rail or event damage CEs. If you can't, then you gotta work with what you got. Generic art CEs, NB damage picks, and the like. While we're on the subject of craft essences, I'll note that her Bond CE is a weird reverse ideal holy king that reduces your ally's health, but also gives her a stackable, full health guts. I'm not sure what possible application it has, but the effect is pretty out there. If you're desperate to squeeze every last bit of damage out of Kiara and you're unable or unwilling to commit Grails or Saint Quartz, you have a final lever in the form of command codes. You've got a number of NP damage related ones. However, I personally would avoid this in favor of saving those slots for challenge quests. You can tailor buff removal codes for specific fights. A lot of these have the side benefit of giving you buffs when you successfully activate them. However, I'm also lazy as shit and hate moving command codes around, so I probably won't do it myself. Professional FGO player. Now before I give my verdict, let's look at some odds and ends. Kiara has an extremely low death rate, half a percent, which makes her tied with Summer BB for the lowest in the game. So if you fight a servant that likes to spam that, you got a pretty good shot at tanking the effect with Kiara. In her final form, Kara gains the Animal Characteristic and Demonic Beast traits. As of this recording, Animal Characteristics is only relevant to teams with Foreigner Koyanskaya, a very strange servant you wouldn't want to run with Kiara in the first place. As for the Demonic Beast trait, that pretty much only comes into play when you're fighting Koyanskaya, and truth be told, I'd much prefer Tamamo no Mae or Tamamo Cat for those battles. As a Moon Cancer, her ascension and skill materials are very forgiving, mostly needing pieces, monuments, and skill gems. So if you happen to get her, Kiara's pretty easy on your resources. Overall, Kiara's an interesting servant whose kit covers a lot of ground. She's got her fingers in a lot of pies if you catch my drift. While this means she can work well in both farming and challenge quest situations, it's usually hard to credit her as the best pick for a given situation. Her versatility also makes her kit very convoluted. That's not a huge issue in farming, but in boss battles, you constantly have to track the uptime on your mermaid meat stacks, the cooldowns of your buff skills, and the benefits of an immediate NP versus an enhanced clan palace, or saving the party-wide evade on clan palace to counter a noble phantasm. This decision-making means your skills will likely drift over time and make future calculations even more complicated. That's the price of her sheer versatility. You gotta use your head a lot. And that extends into team building too. You're not married to double cast story of her boss fights, and this opens up all kinds of shenanigans with old school art supports like Tamamo, expendable buffers like Hans, and even force taunted debuffers like Gilda Ray. I guess what I'm saying is that you need a five head to make the most out of Kiara. Seeing a completed system work is like watching someone play Invoker. Cool as hell, but, well, I don't know about you, but I usually just want to unga bunga. Especially for farming, I personally just use Summer Kama or Chen Gong on JP, because I don't have to think nearly as much. If you're going to be heavily invested in either of those, Space Ishtar or Summer Musashi, you can safely take a detour around Kiara. But if you are interested, I'll say she's a functional farmer with a lot of mechanical depth that rewards knowledge and investment. A path less traveled, but a very interesting one nonetheless. That's all for now, thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more summer event coverage, and come watch me on Twitch where I stream every weekend, 3pm Pacific Time, Friday through Sunday. This weekend I'll of course be rolling for Kiara, so look forward to that. See you there.